This is NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Salar Puriya Sattva. Trust, it's what we build. Presents the Realty Debate with Manisha Natarajan. We all know Delhi and the National Capital Region is choking on dangerously polluted air. And despite making it to headlines almost every day, there's little being done for it. Well, there's another danger, less clear and present, but not any less alarming. The danger of Delhi and all of India cities choking on garbage and solid waste. The figures are so frightening that one wonders, what is everyone waiting for? And by everyone, I mean us, all of us, who seem oblivious to the fact that our cities and lakhs of rupees spent on buying expensive real estate are going to literally go to waste if we don't sit up and do something about it now. Welcome to the Realty Debate on India's garbage problems. Today we will, of course, identify the big problems and also try and get the solutions going. Joining me today, Shirish Sankhe, Director, McKinsey India, Manit Rastogi, Managing Partner, More for Genesis, Dr. Sudhir Krishna, former Urban Development Secretary, and Swati Singh Sambyal, Program Manager, Environmental Government Team, CSC. Thank you very much for joining me, all of you. And I'm going to, you know, quote a little bit from Dr. Ishar Alawalia's three-part article published in Indian Express because it pretty much captures what's happening today. She writes that the garbage menace in urban India is not limited to what meets the eye. That is bulging community bins, rubbish piled on street corners, sometimes left for days in open spaces to rot and pollute, and garbage strewn over stormwater drains. Some cities have partially implemented door-to-door -door collection with the help of resident welfare associations and some have outsourced private agencies. More generally, the waste is dumped unsegregated into the community bins and transported over long distances. Finally, land up in landfills which are becoming landhills of rubbish and are leading to huge number of health problems. So I'm going to deep dive into my questions. First question to you, Mr. Sanke. Few people realize how close we are to being choked by our own garbage. Now, the Environment Ministry notified new waste management rules in April 2016 asking for waste segregation, but none of these rules are getting implemented. So, so what is it? I mean, why is there not enough action on ground? Yeah. So, this is the story of urban India, right? Whatever area you take, uh, there is not enough action, there is not enough money, there is not enough will. On garbage itself, uh, you know that as a country becomes richer, in fact, the per capita generation of garbage goes up. So the numbers you have, uh, have been quoted, which is to say there will be 180 million tons of garbage in India uh, in 2030, I think are grossly underreported. My Our own calculation says it will be somewhere between 250 to 300 million tons annually the garbage so the pro the problem is much 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 bigger and it comes back to the municipal capacity and the municipal sp uh, funding that is plaguing urban india all over so we should talk about how does the municipal capacity and funding get spent on it but even today we are spending and collecting uh, only 60 to 70 percent and only 19 percent of this uh, is treated and less than 12% is segregated. So even the problem currently is much bigger and is going to become much, much bigger going forward. Mm. Mrs. Sudhir Krishna, what was the point of coming out with new norms when none of these rules can be implemented? There's no legal action to be taken. Other than Karnataka High Court, there's not a single High Court which has even turned around and said, you have to make it mandatory to segregate waste. Well, I think rules were required. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, a road map has been laid. It is for the system, for the administration now to come forward and strengthen the municipalities, you know, empower them to handle the municipal garbage, city garbage in a meaningful manner, in a sustainable manner. Uh, today, unfortunately, the municipalities are kind of by, gradually becoming bigger and bigger bystanders mm -hmm. in the whole uh, city administration and uh, it is now telling on the system. Now, where well, Swachh Bharat mission is there, all right. Mm -hmm. But Swachh Bharat Mission and the municipality, the whole labyrinth of procedures and so on, 
it distances the municipalities from handling the uh, you know situation mm -hmm. so i would think that the rules were required rules have come in place that is a, the right thing to have happened funds have come from swachh bharat mission that is also right but the what is missing is empowerment of municipalities giving them the kind of uh, feeling that their city must be clean and then they should be given authority to and they have they are supposed to collect user charges also hmm. and the processing technology and so on so i think that some But rethink none, none, none of it is happening i mean it, empowering it, the Uh, municipal corporations we will come to that but but i mean let's look at the just the rules now they make it mandatory for local authorities to arrange for door to door collection of segregated solid waste distinguishing wet waste dry waste and hazardous waste so i think my question to you is that in delhi rules were notified mcd we all living in delhi areas not once has has mcd even issued a simple notice or an sms saying please start segregating your waste there's a big fight between bjp and aap when it comes to delhi all the time they're fighting over issues so there's pollution it's all a blame game but after the rules by the way i mean nobody in my colony where i live knows that there are any rules asking for waste to be segregated so what is the point of rules what is the point of saying a stage has been set set for what uh of course it's very disappointing because even the 2000 rules msw rules 2000 they mandated segregation and it didn't happen so 16 years after even the new What rules say what do you mean by mandating how I mean, will mandating is one how do you make sure step by step is implemented exactly. do you bring in the courts where courts like in karnataka have said you have to make it happen yes. and if you don't make it happen then there is punishment so there has without to, that how will it happen yeah so there has to be a revision in the bylaws hmm. and even the municipalities have to work actively in spreading awareness pro programs as you said after the rules have come we haven't uh, got any guidelines or any framework in terms of how segregation shall be incentivized or why i as a household should should segregate uh, my waste what incentive will i get for doing that so mm -hmm. unless and until you don't spread awareness and don't tell people that this is the incentive uh, through which uh, you know if you segregate it it will it will help in something make the environment better so unless and until that will not happen uh, it's just futile just getting a rule book will not help okay. also yeah also okay. delhi has another issue when you talk about municipal contacts mm. uh, the contracts they are pro collection and dumping waste in a landfill mm -hmm. all the contracts do not mandate that uh you know you'll be incentivized on collection treatment and processing of waste so if you ah. go by the rule book the mm -hmm. concept of tipping fee mm -hmm. so here you get tipping fee for collecting and dumping the waste so if i as a contractor collect my waste from colony a to colony b and c and dump it to the landfill i get some money for collecting that waste but uh there is no incentive for treatment and processing so all of and us all for segregation as municipalities i mean the the pickers themselves segregate because they end up making some money with exactly. recyclable products exactly. but there's really not even a fee determined for those waste pickers which allows for or encourages waste segregation and this is where my question is manit at household level you need to start at household level there is no question about waste segregation becoming a possibility if segregation does not happen at household level what do you need do you need ngt do you need court do you need imprisonment do you need fine do you need awareness what will get indians to have some basic civic sense uh you know uh my chair the the point is very simple okay and uh, you know i've used that term environmental emergency now the you know the fundamental issue is when it comes to water waste solid waste or otherwise uh, uh sewage uh, any of these uh, are air pollution livability walkability fundamental issues okay are being uh, cannot be uh, done by enforcement by the government simply because they've miserably failed since independence what has been there under the purview of the government we've made acts we've made rules every act and every rule is made with the intention of prosecution that if you don't do this you will be punished but has it led to anything no what we really need to do is start thinking about how we can go bottom up how can we begin to teach our children from school 
from their homes, from uh, their, within our cities, how can we implement projects locally? Stop looking at the government. I've given up on them. Okay, rules are great and everything is great, but what has it done for us? It's done nothing. I, I cannot breathe in my city today. Delhi is the most polluted city in the world. 7% of that or to 9% of that pollution is coming from these so-called landfills, which are not landfills. They're garbage dumps. And these are garbage dumps that are going up 15, 20 stories high. And all of Delhi is a garbage dump. The Nalas are a garbage dump. And these, and you've got instant fires, burning plastic, burning toxins, feeding this area. I mean, so what are we talking about? Mm. The only thing I really see that can happen here is that, yes, you know, citizens have to take this in their own hands. Segregate the waste at your own place. Aim for zero discharge. Construction sites, 50% of the waste comes from construction and demolition. Why can't our sites, why can't we change the entire mechanism of how we think about a city? Cities are by and large treated as instruments which consume and generate garbage and that garbage is left whether it's sewage or solid waste. Why can't we think about it as a closed loop system? Construction waste, we've, we've, we've enforced on projects that we pretty much aim at zero discharge to landfill. Mm. If, if we can do that, where are those construction rules? Again, they will be implemented. But where is the education? Where is the skill building? So, you know, we are talking about a mega problem here. The only way that we are going to get out of this problem is if citizens begin to do this themselves. I agree. I completely agree. So why not have rules and why not have rules which have consequences? This is Sudhir Krishna. Here's what I want to understand from you. In, in, we all knew before Diwali that Delhi is going to choke with crackers. Yet when PILs were actually uh, levy, I mean PILs went to Supreme Court, Supreme Court turned around and said, sorry, we can't ban, ban crackers because we can't implement it. You know, it's foolish to do that, but was that the way out? I mean, seriously, are we, are we not seeing these mounting problems? And if, you, if your country's highest court says that, look, I will not hurt religious sentiments and I will not ban crackers because it's not implementable. Chalo, that is one thing. What about waste? Why can't they say waste segregation, like Karnataka High Court has said, is mandatory? Is it. mandatory. There is no option out. In fact, I would put it another way. Mm -hmm. that we are laying rather too much emphasis on uh, collection and segregation. But to me, what is more important is that uh, processing, recycling and reuse and making the whole process... But as, Mr. Krishna, as, you will only recycle and reuse I'll, when I'll you come segregate. To that. I'll come to that. Okay. No, but in today's environment, we are mm -hmm. only focusing or almost, you know, almost entire en energy and publicity is focused on uh, collection point. Okay. Keep your house, keep your area clean. But after cleaning, where does it go and what happens to that? Once the whole thing is taken as a package from collection to processing as a single package and it is made into a financially viable proposition. Today people are not sure whether they will make money except to, to collect and dump. There is some profitability in that. But processing is not a viable uh, solution. I mean today as things are because municipalities are not leaving user charges and uh, the and polluters are not being asked to pay according Absolutely. to in, the, in proportion to the pollution they are Agreed. they are creating so once these two things are done and recycled material uh, should pay for uh, certain, some part of the mm -hmm. process put together once it is an economically viable proposition then only the whole thing will work merely okay. by making laws and looking up to you know law enforcement agencies and courts to make the environment clean is not going to be sustainable in the long run. In occasional cases, from time to time, it may work. But to make it sustainable, we have to have five factors. One is the financial sustainability. The second is the managerial governance sustainability. Third is technological sustainability. Fourth is environmental sustainability. And lastly, emotional. We are starting with the last, you know. Emotional okay. part is very high. Uh, we should keep the city clean, we should keep everything clean. It's okay, but if it is not viable, if governance-wise the systems are not working, if financially it is not a viable proposition, if we do not take, take environment as a whole, you know, my house is clean, my surrounding is clean, but beyond 20 kilometers I am dumping garbage, I am not bothered, I am helpless, that is not the way. So like that, you know, integrated approach to, okay. to, for a waste management you only. That it's not a single-pronged approach that, okay, segregate waste and everything will happen. Get that point and I completely agree with mm -hmm. you. I'm going to come to you and let's move on to some examples where things have actually happened right. Mrs. Sankit, tell us what's happening. There are, I mean, are there cities, are there municipalities which have actually proven that this can be done? Yeah, so Manisha, just uh, one point. I think I agree with uh, Dr. Krishna that it's an end-to-end -end solution and any weak chain in the, in the solution of generation, segregation, collection, transport, treatment and storage 
anything that go, that goes bad you will feel the pinch uh, maybe tomorrow if segregation works we'll be talking about treatment so therefore it's quite important to uh, think end to end today less than 5% of the money is spent on processing and disposal 60 to 70 percent on collection and 20 to 30 percent on transportation. So the money spent is also quite lopsided. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, uh, best practices, okay, uh, I personally don't give too much weightage to a single uh, society or a single gully doing something because unfortunately it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's great headlines but not sustainable. But for example, what Pimpri Chinsward did, okay, in terms of uh, collection, an entire uh, eight. 8 uh, lakh households, right? Uh, West Picus uh, Workers Cooperative was formed. Mm -hmm. Each wo worker was given 100 to 150 households and 20 to 30 p uh, rupees per month were collected. And they also had rights on recyclable material. The segregation went to 70 to 80 percent. The collection went to 90 percent and still sustainable. There are lots of pockets of examples where things are working, but as Dr. Krishna said, you have to think end to end. And especially on treatment, there is not enough viability. I'll talk about it later. But okay. there are examples, but you do need to think end to end. No, but, but tell us about treatment. What, what's missing in the treatment? So you have this Gazipur plant, which uh, INFS has set up. It's a public-private participation plant. The capacity itself, they're crumbling. They're saying that we just don't have the yeah. capacity. We should by now have had at least five of such plants. So, so are you saying that uh, there's not enough investment going into it? What, where is the problem? No, it, yeah, it needs end-to-end -end thinking. So what I mean by end-to-end -end thinking. For example, cement companies have incinerators, okay, and they would love to get municipal waste segregated today okay. and they will pay money for it by the way to collect okay but since they don't get segregated waste so we do come back to segregation but that solution is already there Pune, for example has a plant which has a biomethanation electricity generation mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, we of course you need five or seven of them they can be done on a ppp basis but again it has to want, uh, run end to end the Pune plant is running only at 60 percent capacity utilization because it's not getting enough garbage <laughs> uh, to produce uh, produce electricity so that's why i said that the chain is uh, chain is important the ppp model can work provided we can think through the economics and the economics does work by the way it's, it works as low as 30 30 to 50 rupees per household uh, per per month that's all okay so it's not a problem it a, any household uh, we have to think about slums separately but any middle class household can uh, can pay that much money so the money is there but end to end thinking is required end to end swati what do you think i mean it seems like it's not there are solutions and they're easy solutions it doesn't cost each household enough money yes or a, a, a huge amount of money pardon me it I feel that from every household some cost should be recovered. We, we are still uh, you know, stuck to 30 rupees per household but that has to be revised yeah, to close rupees. to... In South Delhi everyone is paying 50 to 100 rupees per but month. But in many collection. areas or in many it's smaller rupees, cities okay. it's so still you 30. When you average it it would probably... It, it's still 30, 30 to 50 rupees but okay. that has to go up because how will the municipality recover? its cost. Mm -hmm. That's also a big question. So unless and until you're, you're still stuck to the 20 or 15 year old formula of 30 rupees per household, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you cannot kind of focus on treatment and segregation. Coming to best practices, we recently documented in our report some 13 cities that are doing commendable work. They are? So okay. I start with Alipi. Alipi mm. is probably the only city in the country that is undergoing decentralized waste management. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can ask all of you probably to go and see every household segregating their own waste and uh, they are composting it or generating biogas out of it in their backyards mm -hmm. and houses which do not have the capacity to do so, they have communi community composting bins for mm -hmm. doing the same. We have Mysuru wherein close to 64 wards are divided into nine zero waste management units mm -hmm. and there is close to 90 percent segregation in Mysuru. People are play, playing uh, user fee regularly so there is close to 95 percent collection of user fee and there is segregation, there is composting happening and the dry waste is further uh, recycled or uh, separated into 30 so all is not different lost. categories. All is not all is lost. Not lost. Okay, I, for, as, as, as a first step, I think on, on our website, we are going to take all those 13 examples and put them up for people yes. to view because Manit, to me, it doesn't seem like an insurmountable problem at all. I mean, let's just come back to waste. Air is a much, much larger thing. Start segregating it, start paying user charges, get municipalities to agree, and then, you know, and we've heard from both our panelists, actually, PPP model, you can even process it into energy or manure uh, or compost, whatever you might call it, and, and it could be a win-win situation.
what we've been talking about, yes, we know the solutions exist. We agree with the fact that you need an end-to-end -end solution. And anything that is uh, environmental has to be dealt with systemically. The question of dealing anything systemically is governance. Now, you know, in a city where the chief minister and the lieutenant governor can't agree on anything whatsoever, how are you going to be able to even get an end-to-end -end solution with something as simple as solid waste management, which should be simple, where there are close to about 18 to 20 agencies involved between the four municipalities and the and DERA and, uh, and, you know, all the biogas plants and alternative energy resources. If you put all of that together, how are we going to be able to get an end-to-end -end solution? Being, you know, I call it being an armchair philosopher. I therefore come back to my original point. We, yes, we know what, the, but that is with everything. We know that we know the solutions to water, to pollution, we know all of that. Have we been able to do anything about it? No. So I am of the opinion that we need to make systemic changes at a neighborhood level, take the matter in our own hands, get to a zero discharge level in small communities and make and use these as exemplars to and show to the state that we will take control of our own environment if you are going to do nothing about it. I think I'm going to conclude there and I, in some ways, despite all the larger governance issues which remain, at least on waste, waste alone, I think, you know, we as communities need to start taking care of it. I mean, it's not someone else's mess. It is our mess and it is so easy. You can actually compost on your, in a small balcony, on a terrace, you can start segregating individually if you give which you know a lot of us have started doing in South Delhi individually we've started giving at least recyclable waste to the rag pickers and they love it because they can immediately sell it and there's lesser garbage or dump going in wet waste so on waste management I think I have a viewpoint which essentially means that it has to start at source and I think this is one place where the citizen is fully empowered and and even rag pickers are willing to look at it in fact they are even more attuned than us in terms of what should be or what can be done with the waste. So, so slight difference of opinion, but let's at least start there. Mr. Sanke, thank you very much for joining me here today. Mr. Krishna, Swati and Manit, pleasure to have you with us here. Well, we'll keep bringing these topics back because we can't wait for court orders or government diktats. We have to start segregating waste today. Otherwise, you know, air we can say, what can we do about what's burning in Punjab and Haryana? What can we do about you know, everybody bursting crackers. But what about waste? All of us can segregate starting today. Goodbye and thanks so much for joining us.